Within these videos, you will find an account of the life of Jesus Messiah in drawings. The story of his life fascinates millions of people throughout the entire world. Jesus Messiah Why are all these people gathering at the river? Do you really want your life to be different? Come into this water to be baptized. Now you are cleansed from your sins to start a new life. Everyone calls the preacher at the river John the Baptist. It's not about me. I'm preparing you for someone else. He will show us what God wants. He will baptize you in the fire of God's Spirit. That will completely change you. And then... I... I should be baptized by you. Just do it. Then we'll be doing what God wants. Father, that your kingdom come and your will be done. Suddenly, the voice from heaven says, Yes, you are my beloved son. You are the man after my heart. John the Baptist prepares the people of Israel for the coming of the Messiah. At this time, Romans govern the largest part of the world. Israel is only a small part of the large Roman Empire. The Jewish people long for the Messiah. In their old books, his coming is predicted by the prophets. He will make Israel great. But at the River Jordan, John the Baptist points out Jesus as the sacrificial lamb. Look, he is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is alone in the wilderness for 40 days and nights. He does not eat, he prays. He prepares himself for his task. Jesus takes on Satan, the invisible ruler of darkness. The enemy of God and mankind rules the world with hatred, sickness and death. Jesus has to carry out God's plan. God wants people freed of their fear of condemnation and death. Yes, Father, I want to do what you want. But Satan puts thoughts into Jesus' mind to lure him away from God's mission. If you are the Son of God, then turn these stones into bread. No, it is written in God's book, one does not live by bread alone. One lives by every word God speaks. If you are God's Son, then prove it. Jump off the temple roof. Isn't it written that the angels will carry you? No, it is also written, you shall not challenge God. Look, I will give you all the power on earth. 
but you'll have to kneel down before me. Leave me, Satan, for it is written, God alone is the one we are to worship and serve. After that, Satan leaves Jesus alone for the time being. Angels come to serve Jesus. Jesus returns to the province of Galilee where he's from. He is full of God's spirit. As he travels, people join him. They are curious if Jesus is the Messiah. In Cana, in the hills of Galilee, a wedding is taking place. Jesus is also at the celebration with his mother and some friends. But halfway through the celebrations, what a disaster! The wine has run out. Just do what Jesus tells you. Fill these large jars with water and let the master of the ceremonies taste it. Water? But this is wine, the best wine. Taste this, you have kept the best wine to last. What a party, what a wedding. Water that's turned into wine, the best wine. Jesus of Nazareth did that. Who is he? Capernaum is a prosperous fishing village by the Lake of Galilee. Here, Jesus starts to speak about God's plans. And here, he chooses his first disciples. Peter, let's sail to deeper water and put your nets out there. Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But if you say so... What? I can't believe it! James, John, come and help. It's the catch of a lifetime. Leave me, Lord. I'm a man full of sin. Don't be afraid, Peter. From now on, you'll be catching men. Follow me. Jesus travels with his disciples through the north of Israel. He is telling everybody that God's kingdom is coming. His words are full of power and full of grace. He heals the sick and frees people of demonic powers. Many people follow him. They even come from other provinces and from Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Blessed are you when you need God. You shall live in his new world. Blessed are you when you desire God's goodness. You shall receive plenty. Blessed are you when you have sadness. You shall find comfort. Blessed are you when you do good to others. God shall be good to you. And when you make peace, you shall be called a child of God. Do to others as you want them to do to you. Love your enemies and pray for them. Do good secretly, not to attract attention. Who looks at a woman longing to have her has already committed adultery in his heart. The eye is the light of the body. 
If your eye is clear, then your whole body will be illuminated. But if your eye is cloudy, you live in darkness. No one can serve two masters. It's either God or riches. Don't worry about tomorrow. Seek God first and what He wants. The rest will follow. Do as I say. Then you're like someone who builds his house on a rock. If you don't, you'll be building on quicksand. One day, people are crowding in and around the house of Jesus in Capernaum. We'll never get through. It'll have to be the roof then, mattress and all. What's happening up there? Leave them. Those friends have a lot of faith. Your faults are forgiven. Did you hear that? How dare he say that? He is mocking God. Only God can forgive sins. What is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? The Messiah has the authority to forgive sins. But I say also, Take up your mattress and walk. Incredible! The lame can walk. Yes, I am healed, thanks to Jesus. Jesus does many good things, and He speaks with wisdom and authority. He radiates nothing but mercy and grace. But not everyone is happy with Him. The leaders want to uphold the law. They look to see if Jesus is keeping the rules. Like on the Sabbath. On this first day of the week, it is strongly forbidden to do any kind of work. Here's a man with a shriveled hand. Is it allowed to do well on this day or not? Stretch out your hand. Hooray! I'm healed! We've got to get rid of Jesus. The leaders in Jerusalem must be told that he's leading the nation astray. As the tension between Jesus and the leaders arises, Jesus withdraws. He sails onto the lake with his disciples. Help! We're going under! Why are you afraid? Where's your faith? Quiet! Be still! They tie up their boat on the other side. A raw cry comes from the mountains. A lonely man lives here. He is possessed by demons. He's coming. Him. Ah. Well, well. Jesus. Leave that man, tormenting spirits. What have we got to do with you, son of the Most High God? What's your name? Legion, because there are many of us. Send us into those pigs over there. Go! I'm completely well. Go, leave us. Can I come with you? No, 
stay here. Tell everyone what God has done for you. You have to know that I do only what my Father wants me to do. He sent me. Jesus regularly goes to quiet places to pray. After a night of prayer, Jesus chooses his 12 apostles. He sends them out two by two. He gives them authority over all demonic spirits and diseases. They are the brothers, Peter and Andrew, the brothers James and John, Philip and Nathaniel, Thomas and Matthew, who previously collected taxes for the Roman occupiers, Thaddeus and the other James, Simon, the resistance fighter, and Judas Iscariot. Go, whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. The twelve apostles return excited from their mission. They have done all that Jesus said. After this, Jesus wants to go into the quiet with them, but the crowd does not let him be. Look, the harvest is big, but the workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send workers out to gather in the harvest. Jesus continues to preach and heal. Meanwhile, it gets late. Philip, how are all these people going to get food? Why don't you give them something? We only have 200 coins. That's nowhere near enough. Here's a boy with five loaves and two fishes. That's all there is. Get the people to sit in groups of 50. Jesus thanks God. He breaks the bread and the fishes. Thousands of people are fed as Jesus multiplies the food. truly the Messiah that was promised to us. We've got to make him a king. Look, there are 12 full baskets left over. It's time to send the people home. Take the boat and go to the other side. I'm staying here in the mountains to pray. That night. Ah, it's a ghost. Don't be afraid. It's me. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come. Lord, save me. Why did you doubt, Peter? Some want to make Jesus king. They hope that he will drive out the Roman occupiers. Jesus' opponents are on the increase. Even though he helps people, the religious leaders think he violates the law. They want to turn the people against him. 
get rid of him. Master, when did you get here? Are you looking for me because of the bread I gave you? Don't worry about food that disappears, but about the food that lasts and gives eternal life. I am the bread that gives eternal life. It is my body for the life of the world. How can this man give us his body to eat? Rubbish. Go away. He's just deceiving everyone. Don't you want to go as well? Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of everlasting life. Jesus is being threatened. Some people want to stone him. He leaves Galilee. With a group of followers, both men and women, he carries on with his work in other parts of Israel. Later on, he sets off to Jerusalem. On the way, who do the people say I am? They think you are a prophet. And you? Who do you say I am? You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Don't tell anyone. The Messiah has to go to Jerusalem to suffer and to die. But on the third day, he will rise up from the grave. In Israel, people with a skin disease are unclean according to the law. They live separated. They may not be touched by anyone. The sick must shout to warn they are coming. Unclean! Unclean! Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Go, show yourselves to the priest. Go to the priest? To be examined? Will we be healed then? Yes, whole. We are well. Hallelujah! God is good! Thank you! Were not all ten of you made clean? Where are the others to thank God? Get up! Your faith has not only healed you, but also saved you.
Jesus is called to Bethany, a village near Jerusalem. Lazarus is ill. He and his sisters, Martha and Mary, are friends of Jesus. When Jesus arrives in the village, he hears that Lazarus was buried four days ago. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Your brother shall rise again, Martha. Yes, I know, he will live again at the resurrection on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live. Do you believe that, Martha? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the promised Messiah who was to come, the Son of God. Where have you buried him? Come and see, Lord. Look how much he loved him. But couldn't he have prevented his death? The dead are wrapped in cloths and laid in rock tombs. Remove the stone. Lord, it will stink. It's already been four days. You will see God's glory. Father, I'm doing this so that the people will know who I am. Lazarus, come out. Loose him and let him go. The authorities in Jerusalem are becoming more concerned about Jesus and his followers. That man performs a lot of miracles. If we let this continue, the Romans will take action. They'll destroy our temple and our nation. Just think, it's better that one man dies for the nation than that all are destroyed. So this Jesus has to be killed. One man has to die for all men. That is why the religious leaders look for an opportunity to catch Jesus. He is on his way to Jerusalem. That is convenient. They want the Romans to sentence him to death. Meanwhile, in Bethany, there's a celebration. Mary? What a waste. That perfume is worth a fortune. We could have sold it. We could have given the money to the poor. Leave her, Judas. She saved the balm for my burial. The Feast of Passover is approaching. Crowds of people travel to Jerusalem. They will bring sacrifices to the temple. Jesus enters the city, despite the threat. The people cheer at him. Hooray! Hosanna! 
Long live the man who comes in God's name. The King of Israel. Jerusalem, if you just knew how to receive peace, but you don't want to. The whole world is following after him. He has to stop this. The temple in the capital is the center of the Jewish religion. During the Passover, lambs are slaughtered. They are sacrificed in the temple so people get rid of their sin. But what sacrificial lamb can really free people from guilt, shame and fear of judgment? In the temple courtyard, People are busy trading and changing money. Suddenly, Jesus is there. God's house should be a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. He's dangerous, but the people hang on to his every word. We must find a good moment to get rid of him. We have to find a trick to get him. Then we can have him killed. But not during the feast, no riot during Passover. How much will you give me for him? That's Judas, one of his disciples. I'll hand Jesus over to you. We'll give you 30 pieces of silver for Jesus, the price of a slave. In the days before Passover, Jesus speaks to the people in the temple. He predicts that Jerusalem will fall. Everyone will have to flee, but he will keep on loving the people. Then he asks Peter and John to prepare the Passover meal. In the evening, Jesus and his 12 disciples meet in the city. I'll do it tonight. I've looked forward to eating this Passover meal with you before I suffer. People in authority make others serve them, but it will be the other way around with you. The most serving one of you will be your leader. I am among you as a servant. Lord, are you going to wash my feet like a slave? No, never. If I cannot wash you, Peter, you don't belong to me. Lord, then wash my head and hands as well. Someone who's at a bath only needs to have his feet cleaned. You call me Lord and Master, 
which is right. As I have washed your feet, so you must serve each other in the same way. One of you is going to betray me. It's not me, is it? Never. Judas, what you want to do, do it quickly. Do this often to remember me. Eat this bread. It is my body. Drink this wine. It is my blood given to forgive your sins. This way, God makes a new covenant with you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. If my love is in you, then all will know that you are my disciples. Lord, I'll follow you everywhere. I'll give my life for you. Peter, by the time the cock crows, you'll have denied me three times. Later that evening, Jesus and his disciples leave the city. Judas isn't with them. I'm going to leave you, but the Father will send his Holy Spirit to you. He'll help you and will always be with you. You know the way to the place I'm going. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father unless he comes through me. You stay here. I'm going a little further to pray. My Father, if it's possible, take this suffering away from me. But not my will, but your will must be done. How can you sleep now? Get up. Look, my betrayer is here. Grab the one I kiss. Hello, Master. Judas, are you betraying the Messiah with a kiss? When Jesus let them take him, his followers run off in all directions. Jesus is taken to the high priest, the head of all the Jewish leaders. Peter and John follow at a distance. Peter sneaks into the courtyard. Weren't you with him? No, I don't even know the man. I'm sure you were there. You're a Galilean. I don't know what you are talking about. Come on, prophesy to us. Who hit you? In the morning, Jesus is brought to the assembly of the Jewish leaders. The high priest interrogates Jesus. Are you the son of God? You've said it. Blasphemy. He deserves to die. Let the Romans try him. Jesus is brought to the Roman governor, Pilate. Jewish leaders stir up those watching. They shout all kinds of accusations. What do you say to all these accusations? Nothing. What have you done? I've come to testify to the truth. What is the truth? I find no fault with him. It's the feast of the Passover. Who shall I release, Barabbas or the king of the Jews? Barabbas! Set Barabbas free! What should I do with this Jesus? Crucify him! 
He poses as king. If you release him, you're no friend of Caesar's. Barabbas is released in exchange of Jesus. He had been found guilty of a murder. I am innocent of his blood. Hail, King of the Jews. Look, the man. Crucify him. Away with him. Crucify him. Pilate signs the sentence. Jesus has to carry the crossbeam through the streets of Jerusalem. The place of execution is outside the city walls. The hill is called Golgotha. That means the place of the skull. Here, the soldiers nail Jesus to the wood. Meanwhile, Judas feels remorse for what he's done. I've betrayed innocent blood. What's that to us? Figure it out yourself. Jesus is crucified between two criminals. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. An inscription is placed on the cross in three languages. It says, Jesus, King of the Jews. The soldiers gamble for his glove. If you are God's son, then come off the cross. Yes, didn't he save others? Save yourself. And us. Show some respect for God. We've got what we deserve, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Remember me when you enter your kingdom. I assure you, you'll be with me in paradise today. Around noon, there's a total darkness. It takes three hours. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and John, his disciple, are looking on. Now, you are mother and son. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I'm thirsty. Father, I place my spirit into your hands. It is finished. Jesus dies at three in the afternoon. One soldier pierces Jesus' side. Water and blood flow out. His heart is broken. In the books it says, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. He was maltreated for our faults, killed for our sins. Come, we'll ask if we can bury him. Joseph from Arimathea and Nicodemus take the body of Jesus down from the cross. They wrap him in linen cloths and place him in their rock tomb.
after the days of rest that are set for Passover. Some women go to the tomb. The stone has been rolled away. Why do you look for the living one among the dead? He has risen. Go and tell his disciples. When they hear this, Peter and John run to the tomb. What happened? It's completely empty. Outside, in the garden. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Gardener, have you taken him away? Mary. <gasps> Master! Don't hold on to me. Tell my brothers that I'm going back to my father, who was your father, to my God and your God. That day, two disappointed followers of Jesus find themselves in a discussion with a passerby about the execution of Jesus. Don't you believe the prophets then? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer to enter his glory? It was already written in the books. Everything in there is about him. While passing the bread, their guest suddenly vanishes. But that was Jesus himself. They leave immediately to find their friends in Jerusalem. We've seen the Lord. Mary has as well, and Peter. All of a sudden, I wish you peace. Don't you believe it's me? Look at my hands and feet. My Lord and my God. Jesus appears to his followers over a period of 40 days. He even meets 500 people at once. His disciples return to Galilee. One day, when they are fishing again. Hey guys, do you have anything to eat? No, we haven't caught a thing. Throw your nets out on the other side. My goodness, what a catch. It's the Lord. Master, come and eat with me. Peter, do you really love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Look after my sheep. Follow me. I've received all the power in heaven and on earth. Go into the world and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to do all what I have told you. Just remember, I am always with you every single day until the new world comes. After these words, Jesus leaves the earth 
he is taken up into heaven. But he has said that he will come back again. Jesus' followers stay behind to pray. After 50 days on the day of the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. The same Spirit who was in Jesus now also lives in them and those who will believe in Him. His followers are His powerful witnesses. More and more people hear about Jesus. Listen people, death could not hold Jesus. God brought him back to life and made him Lord. Jesus is the very first one taken in God's glory. And that glory is available to us. Jesus' followers go into the world, despite great opposition. Jesus is the Son of God. We can become God's children as well. This message is also proclaimed through letters. I am not ashamed of this good news. It is God's power that saves people. It was already written in the books. If you believe it, you are good in God's eyes. Then you shall live. Now, more and more people all over the world meet to pray together and read the Bible. They live in God's grace. They experience His favor. They love each other and help those in need. They even love their enemies. And they have received a new and powerful life, full of God's Spirit. God sent His Son to the world, not to judge us, but to save us. Because God loves us so much, he gave His only Son. Everyone who believes in Him will no longer be lost, but will have everlasting life. The story of Jesus Messiah did not stop here. It went further in the lives of millions of people. He came into people's daily lives as a precious friend. You too can receive the life God loves to grant you. How does it start? You can accept God's grace by thanking Jesus for all He has done for you. He has forgiven your sins. He reacts to your choice by living in you with His Spirit. Jesus' presence changes you from the inside out because God gives you a whole new heart full of His peace. What was dark becomes light. In Jesus, there is no condemnation. His grace fills you with love for yourself and others. Read the Bible yourself and find out about Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God, the man who changes the world.